Hello everyone, welcome back to Fanblade. When I first started making things for YouTube, I promised myself I was never going to make an unboxing video. And here it is. This is the world's cheapest bass guitar. This cost uh, $97.50 in New Zealand dollars. That works out to about uh, $68 US. Um, there are other bass guitars available on Amazon for $65 US, but then by the time you factor in shipping and the exchange rate fluctuates. And this is, this is basically exactly the same thing as the cheapest bass in the world. They're all made from the same factory. It's a Fender Precision copy. When I ordered it, it said it gave me an option of four colours, but then at the top of the auction it said it was white. I sent them a note saying, could I please have a sunburst one? If that's not available, then I'm happy with a white one. They've sent me a white one. I'm fairly sure the fretwork is going to be atrocious. I'm fairly sure the pickup is going to be underpowered. I'm hoping there's finish on the neck. I'm not expecting much. For this price, you don't get much, but hopefully we get something. There's no neck support for the box, that's just been rattling around loose in there. We've got the industry standard dreadful, dreadful cable. That'll make a nice piece of washing line, and we've got uh, another Allen key to add to my collection. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's just have a close look at this. I mean, it looks quite fetching. I actually quite like the, the, the colour of it as a white base. You know, it's it's all right. The The first thing I saw, the very first thing I saw is that all these, these pickups are all wrong. It's, um... I'll try and get this in shot. The screws are sticking up. The pickups aren't seated properly. There's, it's This was assembled... Okay, there's like springs or something under there. Right, we'll have to sort those out. Bridge looks decent. The bridge actually looks decent. Knobs feel excellent. The knobs do feel excellent. Standard strap buttons. That one's loose. Strap buttons wobbling around there. Right, what about the neck? The neck is finished. It's got some sort of very thin satiny finish on it. It actually feels quite nice. No obvious knot holes. There's a bit of interesting behind the nut action there. That's uh, some chip out from when they've cut the slot. I don't know about the nut either. There's, I can feel that sticking out just a little bit on that side. And that side, right, so nut needs to be shaved back a bit. Um, the truss rod hole looks like it's drilled crooked. You can see it just pulling towards the right there. more of a rough edge around there um, but I mean what what do you expect the thing was $97 <laughs> it's actually not too bad the fact is you can't even build a bass guitar for less than that and, and yet they have and you see even more blemishes there this is where the uh, the finish has they've got some of the finish from the neck on top of the uh, on top of the fretboard there. It's not a major problem, but it just points to sloppy work. But what do you expect for the money? Good grief. Now, it's insanely light. Like, it's stupidly light. It's nicely contoured. That, you know, sort of... You know, like, that feels like a bass. It feels like a bass. Um, it, it feels light as... Like, the neck is heavy. The neck is a, the neck is actually maple neck. Surprise, surprise. Um... Like, I've, I've seen the acoustic guitars that weigh more than this. We've got to find out what this body is made of. I, I, I'm Like, for the price, I was expecting plywood. But there's just nothing to it. I 
I wonder if that's what passes as a shim. Bits of bits of dried finish stuck to the stuck to the neck. So that's uh, that's not going to be helping matters. We've got actual wood grain. There's actual wood grain in there. Let's uh, let's take a chisel to that and see what we find under there. Pretty hard to know what sort of wood that is, but I'll bet you it's soft. I'll probably find more when I take the pick card off. But for now, it looks pretty soft. Like it's light as anything, so it's push pin time. Yep, we've got a body that's made of cork. Okay, let's just try that on the neck. <clears throat> yeah, neck is maple. Good. End of the neck, I've just noticed as well, is really, really rough. That's a lot of sanding marks. Details. That's why you spend your money. Okay. Okay. Let's just pop it back up. Good. Good. Okay, so the measurement across the pickup is 6.9k. It's not, it's not, that's not bad. It's not awful. You can see in the manufacturing process and all the corners that they've cut, um, they've used one giant router bit to cut all of this out. Uh, and because the corner of the neck is smaller than the radius of the router bit, they've had to go in further. Um, and obviously it gets hidden by the, uh, uh, by the scratch plate. Um, but it's just, you know, like they didn't have to waste the time with a smaller bit to cut all this out, and they didn't have to waste time changing bits. They just used the one. And so you get that. That's another way of keeping costs down. A little bit of yellowing, a little bit of cracking around all of the screws. I suspect that may be just uh, the, the, the finish be reacting with the wood or reacting with the uh, the iron and the screw or just the, the, there's some sort of chemical reaction on, going on here, uh, and it's sped up the yellowing of the... Uh, of, of the finish. The paint's probably not that good itself anyway. So who knows what colour this base is going to be in a couple of weeks. It might even be sunburst in a couple of months. Electrically not much to see. Volume, tone, output jack. Cheap little output jack. That'll probably fall apart in a couple of days. Um, got a grounding wire on it. That's a good start. Yeah, that all appears to be. It all appears to be in order. Soldering is a little bit crusty, but again, what do you expect for the price? Um, what's interesting to me is that these have now popped up, which suggests that all of this is not cut to the right size. No, they were just, just assembled in a hurry. Uh, Right, let's see what we can do about the neck pocket here. They've uh, cut this uh, with some sort of chamfered, because it's, it's, it's chamfered on a 45 degree angle around, around here, uh, and then it's chamfered 45 degrees under there on that side, and that's left a burr on here, which they haven't bothered to, they haven't bothered to cut that off. It might actually just be attached to the Let's get rid of this. <laughs> hey, I've got two layers of plastic on this. It's a it's a dual layer dual layer system. And yet we've still got plastic to take care of on there. Okay.
that wouldn't have been so hard for them to do, would it? Let's have a closer look at the underside of these pickups and see what we're dealing with. They feel really, really light. They feel really, really chintzy. I don't even know if they're glued in there. The frets are suspect, to say the least. Exhibit A, not polished. Very unlikely that this fretboard has been leveled and crowned. Very unlikely. So even in the process of just uh, taking this apart, that cap, the solder has come off the cap. That was soldered down there supposedly, but it just wasn't attached properly. So that could have been interesting mid-song if that had just come loose. So we'll uh, get that soldered on there properly. And just so that uh, everyone's aware, I'm using three pieces of reasonably heavy cardboard. This is quite a lot. Uh, normally I would just use the one, but uh, this needs quite a lot of adjustment. So hopefully that should pull it into line. In the end I went with my gut instinct and only used two pieces. A shim is only a very tiny thin thing, but when you spread that angle out over the length of a bass guitar it makes quite a remarkable difference. A little goes a very long way, as they say. And now with the strings on we can look for obvious flaws in the fretwork. The quick and dirty approach here is to just try and tap the fret down just in case it isn't seated properly. In this case, that didn't work. So now the best option is to level the frets, and I will include a link in the description of this video so that you can check out my previous video from the 5 string bass build series where I go into this process in much more detail, or you can check out any of the thousands of videos on YouTube that tell you how to do this. Okay, you probably saw there me uh, peeling the masking tape off and there were little splinters of, of, of wood coming up. This fingerboard has never been sealed. There is no finish on it. It feels pretty rough. There's not a lot I can do about the roughness uh, without getting in there and just carefully filing out each uh, between all the frets. That's too much work. What I am going to do though is uh, give this a layer of oil. Now, on a 
lot of my other videos I use super glue to seal wood. Not this time, it's probably going to raise too many splinters. And besides, people want to know about oil. People ask me about oil all the time. Uh, one of the things you'll never see me do on this channel is use true oil. I think it's overpriced, and all it is is 50% boiled linseed oil and 50% polyurethane. You can make it yourself for a fraction of the price. Don't waste your money on true oil. That said, I am actually using wood oil today. I'm using some Penetrol, uh, which I have hanging around. And this is uh, good. It works exactly the same as true oil. You just slop it on and it soaks in and then you wipe off the excess and that'll be fine. That'll just seal this fingerboard. There's a little bit of the finish from the rest of the neck splashed on there. So I'm going to have to scrape that off. And there's one or two other little bits that I want to clean up. And then we'll... Uh, then we'll seal this. I'm using some wax and grease remover to clean the fingerboard just before I apply any oil. It's always a good idea to do this before applying oil, simply so that you are getting rid of any of the residual manufacturing dust and if there's any sharpie left on the frets. It means that you've got a nice clean surface for the oil to soak into and it will actually soak in a lot better, especially when you spill it on your workbench. Look at that, the more I suspect that this fingerboard is actually made of the same quiller that I use for my fingerboards. It doesn't look like rosewood to me, it looks a lot more like quiller. It doesn't really surprise me, rosewood's you know, been on the CITES list for a couple of years now. Um, I doubt they would have you know, used it on such a cheap instrument as this. But it's, you know, it's good to know that it's, it's still decent wood. It's ready, time to take it next door and plug it in for the first time and see what sort of sound we get. I've just noticed with these pickups that they are offset. As it is, I'm going to see if these sound any good. If they sound about as sort of weak and terrible as I'm expecting, then we'll swap all these out. I've also got a couple of ideas about the pick guard, but I might save that for another video. Okay, so normally um, I take my instruments at the end of the video and I'll uh, play them at a gig. We're at a gig now, and... Hold on. We're at a gig now, and the uh, pickup has fallen apart inside the... It's fallen inside its case. So that's kind of interesting. It was sounding good up until that happened. Also, I've noticed that after only an hour's worth of playing, the, uh, there's a little crack forming, I don't know if that's in the finish or if it's just because the uh, body is made of cheese or what it's, uh, what's happening there, but I don't expect that to last too much longer. So what was meant to be a video about how to take the world's cheapest bass and make it awesome turned into a video about why the world's cheapest bass will fall apart on stage for you. Oh well, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that and neither were you. In the next video, 
what we're going to do is actually follow through and make this awesome. Uh, this pickup is terrible, we're going to take that out, we're going to stick in a Seymour Duncan quarter pounder, and we're going to get it in the right place. It needs to go that way about a centimetre, which means we're going to need to make a new uh, pick guard as well. I'm also considering if I can find a, uh, a spare jazz bass pickup or router cavity out there and install that. Um, but yes, as I said, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and come back next week and we'll see what sort of madness we can do with a, a bass guitar that's ripe for experimentation. Thanks for watching.